So good afternoon, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking about episode 5 of Red Dwarf, which is called Confident and Paranoia. Exactly what goes on my head. So like the last time, I'm going to quickly go through a few facts before I jump in. So this episode was directed by Ed By again, like the previous one. It was aired on the 14th of March 1988 at 9pm on BBC2. So with Mark and Doug writing it as usual, I personally enjoyed this episode, but it's ranked as one of the weakest episodes of season one by the Red Dwarf magazine, Red Dwarf Smegazine. What a fucking name. <laughs> so in this episode, we have two guest characters which are played by Lee Corners as Paranoia and Craig Ferguson as Confidence. I apologise for butchering the first name. So this episode was also remastered after it so it could be suitable for international viewers as they didn't fit the standards beforehand. This episode references The Wizard of Oz and also references the Agatha Christie novels. So let's get into it. I'll give you a little quick summary and as well at the end of the episode I'm going to show a few screen prints of previous comments of what I found enjoyable or some cool facts. So in a summary, Lister falls ill after entering a contaminated area of Red Dwarf. He's trying to get Kachansky's hollow disc. This is a woman he fancied but never actually went out. Well in the actual audio books he does go out with her for about two weeks in one of the audio books but in the show he up until season seven season eight until she gets there he wasn't actually with her in the show so it's a cool difference between the book and the actual tv shows so we start with lister he's watching a soap opera he keeps getting interrupted by holly holly's really bored he's read all the books he's read everything so he says lister can you please delete the agatha christie novels from my head or my memory so i can reread them but he keeps interrupting lister whilst he's watching a tv show after this lister goes to sleeping quarters to finish watching a show just to get interrupted by rimmer so whilst this is happening lister mentions to rimmer that he's been down to the officer's block He's been down there to look for the holodisks. He wants Kachansky instead of him. He wants to switch him over. So Rimmer actually lets Lister know he's been in a radioactive area and he shouldn't have gone down. Later on, Lister wakes up, clearly from being down in the radioactive area. He's quite unwell. He tries to go down to the hospital deck, but he collapses. And these scutters actually have to take him over to the medical bay. That famous scene with the cat where the cat's eating fish or eating dinner and Rimmer comes in. He, quick, quick, we need to help Lister. And then the cat goes, yeah, yeah, it goes to get up but doesn't actually get up and then Rimmer runs away he comes back just keeps happening <laughs> just a cat for you so after the scene Lister is having a fever dreams in his sleeping quarter he's hallucinating and it's becoming real so fish are raining down in the sleeping quarters and the production team actually worried about this they're worried that people think it, they're doing animal cruelty but it says no fish were actually harmed and none were dropped from any height but they were placed on the floor and they, it was done using camera technique so his hallucinations are real he next sees a 16th century Warsaw mare spontaneously combust. Rimmer wakes up Lister and he tells him there's two strangers in the drive room. One is the personification of confidence and the other is paranoia. They have came from Lister himself. Confidence is a tall, smooth-talking showbiz man. Paranoia is pale, judging, and he's an unconfident man. He's very fitting with Rimmer. That's why they get along and speak to each other. Confidence goes and spends his time with Lister. Whilst this is happening, actually, I do need to add Holly warns about a dust storm outside and all the airlocks are sealed. Lister is playing a song he wrote for Kachansky to Confidence. He's playing the song, he's playing his heart out. Confidence is naturally amazed. Kachansky is bought up and Lister says he can't find the hologram discs. Confidence assures him he can do anything, whilst Paranoia is simultaneously telling Rimmer all of Lister's embarrassing blunders and how much he hates Lister. So they have a plan, they think they can resurrect Kachansky without deactivating Rimmer, which is actually a good plan. Rimmer still won't tell him where the discs are. Confidence and Lister say they're going to solve this. They're outside near a solar panel, so they pop on those spacesuits once the dust storm is over. Dust storm is over, Confidence and Lister are suited up to pick it up outside. The medical unit has also been destroyed and paranoia has disappeared. Lister and Confidence head outside. They find a disc. Confidence admits he destroyed the medical unit. Confidence is still a fever hallucination and curing Lister would mean his departure. So, is he, so he also admits he murdered paranoia by feeding him to a waste grinder. Lister panics and says to go inside as he's getting hot in his spacesuit. Confidence says, take off your helmet. Just take it off, pal. In an act of overconfidence, Confidence takes his helmet off and is decompressed. So you see him die, his head explodes. 
<laughs> Lister has the discs and he's preparing to resurrect Kachansky afterwards, so he's got the hollow discs. Rimmer warns him he'll be unhappy, which actually proves to be true. The discs are for Rimmer a second version of himself. So instead of Kachansky, there's now two Rimmers, which leads into the next episode, which is a fucking excellent episode. Rimmer welcomes his clone on board. So they film this by doing split screens, adding it uh, together later on in post-production. I do need to add as well, when I listen to the audiobooks, the first one actually goes into Lister's background, how um, he meets Rimmer on Mimus. Rimmer's going to meet a sex robot, I believe. And that's how he meets him and bribes him to get a job on, on board Red Dwarf in the first place. But in the audiobooks, you also, you see a few things like this and you hear about Rimmer and his past Self and you hear about the soup incident and a lot of things that go on in the background so if you haven't listened to the audiobooks a few of them are done by chris barry a few of them are done with charles craig i think as well but they're proper enjoyable and you get more behind the scene knowledge as well this episode was originally going to be broadcast as a series cliffhanger with the new series finale taking place considering it's one of the weaker efforts from the first series this episode was actually remastered as i mentioned earlier along with the rest of the first three seasons in nine 1998 to bring the episode up to standard soup or for international broadcast the next episode i'll go over is called me and that's episode six and before i go i want to mention a few comments which i've got so the first one here is from phil he said good work man thanks for the shout out of course man i appreciate all your comments thank you for everything the one below also referencing the alien the alien pod from the last episode i appreciate all the comments a comment here from nobody really ate Three, four. There's a bunch of stuff on Red Dwarf that shouldn't exist after millions of years. If there was a big enough holy war between cats, how was there anyone left on the ship? That's very true. Someone um, else put vacuum store chicken lasts forever. It would have been a it would have been as rotten as the day it was thrown into space. A brilliant few comments from someone called Stainless Steel Fox One. I'm not going to read all the comments out, but you should go back and have a look. It's absolutely brilliant. He actually brings so much knowledge into my videos, and I want to mention the guy who. I forgot to mention his comment in the previous video. He said my fans would be called pedophiles, so I appreciate that, mate. That's very, very great. But yeah, um, if you enjoyed this one, let me know. Um, it's a little bit longer. Tried to put a bit more info in it. So yeah, respect, lads. It's been pid.